Great stuff. Wow. Myron Butler, glad to have you here tonight. Thank you guys for coming. Now listen, Myron, I think I could actually improve my sound a little bit if I had a choir behind me like that. <laughs> See, you're, you brought a secret weapon with you. Yes, always. That's very smart, very smart. We're blessed to have you guys. Thanks for being a part. We're so glad you're with us as well. It's just such an honor to, to have you here to be a part of our program tonight. And hey, I want to mention real quick, I just want to mention something. I want to encourage you. You know, it's summer vacation time. A lot of people are getting some time away. I want to encourage you, if you're anywhere near Florida, I want to challenge you to go out. Go out, encourage you to take your kids and go out to the Holy Land experience. It's right there in Orlando, Florida. It's, it's worth going. They've got some great programming, great shows. My favorite thing that I would want to go see was this thing they call the Scriptorium. It's a place where you can see how the Bible was put together. And uh, it really just makes it all come alive to realize this is a holy book. This is just not some book written by man. This is a book that was brought to us by God. And so it's just powerful stuff. It'll just make the Bible become real to your kids. It'll make it become real to you. I believe that God will touch your life if you just go check that out. I want to encourage you to do that. Go check out the Holy Land Experience. It's just a great place place to go. It's a great place just to find yourself drawing closer to the Lord again. Go check it out. I think you'll be blessed if you do that. So just want to mention that. Hey, also, we're so excited to, to just to have some great guests on, but I got to admit, I'm a little biased because I'm what you call a rabid football fan. Okay, now I know I'm not alone in this, all right? And so we have got some special guests. Would you please give a warm welcome to Danny and Mark Bradley, former NFL players, father and son. Both these guys. Good to have you on. Thank you. Great to have you on. Man, this Thank is you. great. Well, I, I'm just thrilled to have you guys on, and just you guys have an amazing story. Now, now before we get into the story, I, I just because everyone's going to be asking, okay, well, who did they play for? How long did they play? All that kind of stuff. So both of you played for the same college team. Is that right? Correct. That would be correct. So you both Boomer Sooners, right here. Both of you guys played for Oklahoma <laughs> University. And so, great school, and, and really, I mean, be careful about that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we are recording in Dallas. I realize that. I mean, I got, got to watch Heart it. Orange everywhere. Exactly, but but it's interesting because I mean, really, both of you played during the years when I mean, you guys had some dynasties going on. You really did. You played for Switzer. You played for Stoops. Oops. I mean, incredible coaches, incredible leadership, and uh, and just some some phenomenal teams. So tell me tell me about that. Would you do that? Just tell us when when did you play for OU, and then how long and then you went on to go and play in the NFL. Tell us about that. My, my time at the University of Oklahoma ran between 81 and 84. I was a part of the 85 draft, wow. uh, NFL draft. And uh, I spent uh, a few years with the LA Rams and the Detroit Lions. And uh, we had some really great teams back then. Um, my LA Ram team finished, uh, played in the, in the NFC Championship game and lost to uh, the Chicago Bears, who eventually <laughs> drafted this guy in 2005. But uh, we had some great teams at the University of Oklahoma. Barry was uh, a character, but a great coach to play for. We, uh, the 85 Orange Bowl was a national title game for us, and uh, wow. we didn't win it, but uh, we've had, uh, God was good to us. We had an, a, a lot of opportunities to accomplish some unique things. That's great. And you played with some, some incredible talent. You, of course, was part of the, were a part of that talent as well, but you played, I mean, some of the players you played with were, were, you know, top picks as well. I mean, you, we're just talking about you played with Brian Bosworth, is that right? Oh, yeah. We, we had, uh, you know, at one point in the NFL draft, we had more players drafted in one year than the entire Southwest Conference had. So we, That's incredible. we had some tremendous talent. And Brian was certainly one of those great, great players oh, yeah. and one of those guys that you want in the locker room if you, you're going to win some games. So. And, and you had something to add to that? Yeah, I definitely want to add something to that. I like to brag on my dad. If you <laughs> guys don't mind, I like to brag on Let's do it. Let's do it. With that talent that was loaded at the University of Oklahoma, he was the only player to be MVP and Offensive Player of the Year in the same year. Wow. I don't think that's ever been. Wow. That. <laughs> My goodness. Incredible. Well, it's, it's easy to do when you got great talent around you. That's good. Now, what was your position? I played quarterback. Played quarterback? Yeah, yeah. I was you were the guy. Yeah, I was the guy. That is great. Praise yeah. God. Well, that's incredible. So then, so then, here, your son comes along. He's got a little talent running through the veins there. And just so, a little bit. Just a little just bit. A little and, bit. Then you, and then you played. You, you went to OU as well. And right. tell, tell us when you were there. I was there from 2004, uh, 2002 to 2004. I played under Bob Stoops, receiver. And, uh, man, we had some great runs as well. Uh, played for two national championship games. Wow. Unfortunately, we lost them both. Um, but I had a great time there, a great experience. And, you know, had a Heisman Trophy winner. Incredible. And quarterback and Jason White, they made my job a lot easier. So... 
Oklahoma's been producing them year after year, so it was fun. It was great. So you were the quarterback, and you were the receiver. Yeah. <laughs> there you. I love it. That, that's some good stuff. And, so, and then you went on to play in the NFL. Yeah, I was drafted 2005 to the Chicago Bears. Had an opportunity to play in the Super Bowl against the Colts. Uh, it was a unique situation. It was the two, uh, it was, what was the first two black African American coaches that ever made it to the Super Bowl. Wow. Uh, and that was, that, was, uh, that was great to just be a part of. moment, absolutely. And um, unfortunately, we lost that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I got a chance to get some hardware out of it. Yes, you, you did. <laughs> I like that. There you go. <laughs> but. Um, after the Super Bowl, um, I had one more year there in Chicago, went to Kansas City, spent two years in, with the Chiefs, and then I went down to Tampa, spent the year there. So I've had fun, man. I, you know, NFL has been great, college experience has been great, but again, I wouldn't be where I am today and I wouldn't be having the opportunity to experience the NFL, even TBN, if it hadn't been for the sacrifices my father made for me to have that. That's great. Oh, thank God. Translation? Translation here, he was much more talented than I was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Listen, you know what? I love the fact that y'all are struggling to try to one up bragging on the other, and I love that. <laughs> and uh, you know what's really neat, though, is that here you were the quarterback and you were a wide receiver, and I would say that what you were throwing spiritually, you caught. Hey, Amen. Man, I like that. that. You I know like what I mean? Yeah, I like that. I really see that. And that's good stuff. That's really good stuff. And so, Absolutely. you know what? You, you, you have a book out where you share an incredible story. Would you just give us a little bit of insight about your story as a father and as a son? where the Lord has you. Would you share that with us? We want to hear some of your story. Well, uh, this is a love story. Um, it's not a love story between a father and a son. It's a love story of a father loving a son. Um, I was named after another man at birth, and my father had no idea that I was in this world. And uh, my mom named me after another man, and he didn't have, a, not, again, a, an idea that I existed in 1985. The Orange Bowl he was just talking about, he was getting ready to play for the biggest game of his career. Shot for the national ch championship wow. game. And two days before, he gets this phone call from my mom saying that you have a son. And being experienced and playing, I couldn't imagine the weight that he had at that time to experience that phone call and yeah. then had to go perform in a game like that. And, um, you know, he... He had some PI, uh, some PI, and afterwards he had some family back at home to do some PI and and try to find out who this kid was. And um, I was named after another man, had a ready-made family, so he didn't think that, you know, I of course could be his. And um, you know, thinking about it, it kind of chokes me up a little bit, but I'm I'm, I'm gonna make it through. I'm gonna make it through. <laughs> it's okay, and, real men cry. It's all right. We're we're good with it. Man. Well, you I talk share, about it in the book. How I cry a lot. I'm yeah. one of the crying as men. That's all right. That's crying. all right. You share your heart. We love um, it. But after that, he did some P.I. and uh, he thought that my mom was basically trying to piggyback off the soon to be success. And rightfully, a lot of women have done that to NFL players and they never really go and check out these, these acquisitions. And so, you know, he got drafted, married his college sweetheart because he didn't know. He didn't believe and he, you know, he went on with his life, married his college sweetheart. And um, that kind of set the tone for the story. And uh, he was drafted and I had a gunsight incident at the age of five, and um, I call it divinely. I say it's divine, and uh, if it hadn't have been for that, I don't. Maybe I, I wouldn't have known who my real father was. And um, he came down and wanted to know if I was really indeed his son, hmm. uh, because if it, I was his son, here's a kid playing with guns. I want to know about it. And uh, we did the blood test, and I turned out to be his son. And um, the warfare started there. My mom had this personal vendetta towards my dad. If she couldn't be involved in his life, she wasn't gonna allow me to be a, a part of his life. And so she got the family to circle the wagon and for 20 plus years, me and my family um, definitely said some negative things about my father, saves a deadbeat dad, defamed him. And uh, he was anything but that. He was a man of character, man of God. And uh, he represented that all through his career. So, I, you know, I wrote this story for, for three main reasons. I wanted to set the record straight about who my father is, who he was, and we badmouthed this man for 25 plus years, or so 20 plus years. We wrote a book about him verbally. And so I wanted to just set the record straight about who my father was in that small town of Arkansas that I grew up in. And the second reason is to encourage fathers to never quit 
on your kids. Amen. I, I was a kid Amen. that indulged in drugs and alcohol, had thoughts of suicide because I felt so tired of being in between this love and hate relationship. My father gave me this example of what love really was, and then we had this bitterness on my mom and, mm. and my mom's side of the family. So being in between the two, I just, I felt like I was the reason why the family was at war. So thoughts of suicide became my way out. That was my escape goat, drugs and alcohol. And uh, I never really told my mom that I had thoughts of suicide. And even though I was raised to dislike this man for years, he, I, I can come to him and, and say, man, I'm struggling. And I might not have done it the, without just coming freely and doing it. This man recognized that I had thoughts of suicide. That's a focused father. Yeah. What man really understand? What man understands that a man that understands who he is, he understands that he's a man of God. And I had covering. So I'm just thankful and encouraging fathers to never quit on your kids and to encourage women. Don't use your kids as a pawn to control Amen. these fathers. That's good. It's not going to do anything but hurt the children. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and once you get that understood, then you can work out your differences yeah. between each Amen. other. Yeah. It, my father wasn't in the household. My father did a better job of parenting me across the state border. Wow. And so I just encourage mothers, don't, do, do not use your kids. Bad mouthing them is going to paint images in their heads about who their father is. And when you get that image, even if your father do, or if, if, if he is a deadbeat dad, well, let's just say he, he comes and he, he gets clean up, finds the Lord. And now he wants to be involved in your life. Well, the kid is not going to allow it because he have all these bad images about this, this father. And that's what happened with yeah. me. Sure. So that's, that's the three main reasons why I wanted to, you know, write this book to encourage fathers and to encourage mothers not to use their, their kids as a pawn. You know, as you say that, I just want to just stop and just say this for a moment if I can to, to the person watching. This is so common. This is, this is just real life stuff. It happens every day all Amen. across America, all yes. across the world. And I think it's such a, a reminder to the person who is caught in the middle of a mother and a father divorced or, or never married or fighting or whatever it is, and, and the child feels this guilt, feel like they're supposed, I'm responsible for it when you're not, you know, because people are responsible for their own actions, exactly. not for the actions of others. Absolutely. You know, but I just want to encourage you that in the middle of your mess, look what God can do. Amen. Look how God can restore, how Amen. God can change people. And it's funny, too, how we're not real comfortable with the fact that we want God's grace to be on everyone but the one that hurt us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, now, hold on now, that guy can't change. Because <laughs> he hurt me. No, that, that woman, she can't change because she, she hurt me, right? Yeah. So I just want to just, just ask you, just take a moment, would you, and, and, just, and just look right at that camera, and would you just take a moment and minister to that person? Would you just tell them what, what do they need to do if they're caught in the same mess that you were caught in? What, what's their hope? What can they do? Well, I would, I would say to fathers, man, that your children is a gift from God, even if it's out of an act of sin. I understood that from my father that kids are perfectly and wonderfully made, Amen. that says in the scripture. And so I encourage your fathers to definitely don't quit, don't give up. My father didn't try to do this in his own might and his strength. Amen. He had a higher standard that he was using, and that was the word of God to be able to withstand all the things me and my family put him through. The greatest thing that this man ever did was basically just love us through it. And uh, I, what more can I say? Love never fails. First Corinthians 13, 4. It will not fail you. And the man faced 20 years of adversity, not just with me and my family, but his personal life. So never quit on your kids. Mothers, don't use it. Don't do it because it's going to hurt the children in the long run. And I, I say to kids, who are in the middle of it. Talk to someone. Don't try to hold it in. Find some spiritual counselor or someone you can really give off this information because when you have it stored inside of you, all it's going to do is going to explode. And that's what led to drugs and alcohol and, and thoughts of suicide uh, to me. So I, I just express uh, the I just want you to get out there and just talk about it. So uh, if it hadn't been for my father, man, I could be dead and gone. So I'm just thankful for the sacrifices my father made. All right, Dad, I want to talk to you real quick here. Now, now, now we're sitting here pretty today talking about a great young man who's honoring the Lord, doing the right things. But there must have been a season when you thought, Lord, 
I don't know what's going to happen here, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So tell me about that. When you're in the middle of this, you're thinking, I don't even, you know, I'm, I can't even get to my son. I can't. What do I do when you feel powerless? What, what do you do in those moments? Oh, man, it's so many places to begin. I, had it not been for God's grace and his mercy. Amen. It's good. I wouldn't have survived this. I didn't have a perspective. I come from a domestic violent home myself. And uh, I didn't have this image of God. The first thing kids see and their fathers should see is this image of God. Yeah. I didn't have that in my formative years. My dad and I have a great relationship today. He's a wonderful man of God, impacting lives everywhere he goes. But I didn't have that as a kid. And I, I've, I made a vow as a young man, as a little boy to be the dad that I never had in my formative years. Wow. And uh, I didn't know that it would take place in you know, God's grace. Again, his mercy is, is just sufficient. I wasn't expecting it to happen when it happened, but sometimes the worst things that you think is happening to you can turn out to be some of the best things that's happening for you. That's good. And for me, I was in the process. I had, uh, my athletic career was it was it's about as good as it can get. I'm a major college quarterback at a major institution, NFL drafted. I had a wife, a life, I had a career. And like so many men, um, we live in this world of perception and images. And often we, we're more concerned about our perception before man than how we stand before God. Yeah. So when that phone call came in, and I had all of these things happening in my life and I was on top of the world. And uh, I heard about this gunshot incident. I jumped on the next flight from LA to Little Rock. And on the way, I had mixed emotions about it because I wasn't prepared to be a father. I had not seen what a spiritual father looked like. Didn't have any idea what it's supposed to look like, taste like, feel like. I was clueless. But I had one thing that made the entire difference for me. I had the Word of God. That's good. And the moment I got off that plane and got those results back, a couple of weeks later, I was in training camp. My entire world changed. A few years later, I was sitting before the salary cap administrator with the Detroit Lions who had extended a two-year contract to extend my uh, stay in Detroit. The NFL strike had just ended and I had a marriage that was in trouble uh, because my wife was just not willing to fight to help me have access, uh, to help me fight to have access to my son. Um, she just wasn't really with that and uh, I understood but I wanted to fight for my marriage. I walked away from the Detroit Lions. I went, came back to Dallas, fought for my marriage, and positioned myself to be a, son, a father to a son that I didn't even know, wow. who, who carried the name of a, another man, whom had another father, had a ready-made life. And I, I just fell on my knees and said, Lord, I don't know how to do this. I have no idea what direction to go. And I just made, according to the guys in my locker room, about the dumbest decision you could ever make. You just walked away from an NFL career that you've been fighting all your life to obtain. But at the end of the day, I wanted to be the dad yeah. that I never had. That's great. And that, that was more, yeah. that was more important to me. Yeah. And, and again, I didn't have any, any I, I didn't have any templates in place in my spirit. Yeah. I just had the Word of God and He began to work with me. And He started to lay this foundation that, um, that changed everything in my life. And it started with Deuteronomy 8.3. And that was the template, Matthew 4.4. 4, uh, 4, 4. That man should not live on bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's good. No prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Mm. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men spoke 
as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And I took God at his word, sure. and that's all I needed. And it helped me to become the overcomer that God created us to be. So now we're just trying to jump in this fight and partner with agencies and organizations yeah. that are already in the fight. Uh, parental alienation is what Mark was talking about. It's going on way too much inside the household. Yeah. What's happening in our country today is just a reflection yeah. of the lack of leadership by fathers. Yeah. I think the greatest gift that a father can ever give his children is to love their mother. Amen. It Absolutely. didn't matter what she did. Yeah. I was commanded and commissioned to love her independent of her mistakes. You know, it's funny you, because you, you, said, you said this multiple times just a few moments ago that you didn't know what to do, but you really gave us the first step. You took responsibility. Amen. You just said, I, I know I'm states away. I know I don't know him, but I'm going to take responsibility. And I would just say to the person out there who doesn't know what to do, that's the step. Take responsibility and God will show you the rest. You know, and that's exactly what the two of you are doing in your lives. That's what you've done. That's why God's brought you together. And that's why God's given you a powerful message to other people as well. And uh, we just thank God for you. We thank God for not only, obviously, God's given you a platform. But many people have a platform, but they're not using it for the Lord. Hey, amen. And you're using it for the Lord. You're a shining example of what a young athlete can do for the Lord, how he can live his life. You know, for, for, for a father to say, I'm going to take responsibility for what matters. And I just want to say, on behalf of the Lord, I honor the, the two of you for the message that you're putting out there. It's a powerful message. It's countercultural. It needs to be said. It needs to be done. And I just want to just say this to the person who's out there right now, who's struggling, who's hurting, who's in the middle of a mess with your family. We say, I don't have a family. I have a train wreck right now. Amen. I want to encourage you that you can go all through the Bible and see lots of train wrecks that turned out pretty good. Amen. That God can take a mess and turn it into your message. He can take your test and turn it into your testimony. Amen. And that's exactly what He wants to do for you. Would you just take a moment? Would you do this, Dad? Would you just pray for those who are hurting right now? Sure. Who are finding themselves in a struggle saying, I don't know what to do. Sure. Take responsibility. Let's just, let's just lift them up and just, and just give them that first step to take. And that is in prayer. Go ahead. Amen. Father, we just agree with your word. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. For the thief come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Christ have come that we may have life and life more abundantly. Thank you for fathers. Spiritual fathers. We lift up the father who haven't found his way yet. And I want to say to you that the Lord loves you unconditionally. And we ask right now, collectively, that the blessings of the Lord be realized in your life. It does not matter what your issue is. Maybe you come from a domestic violence situation as I did. Maybe you experienced parental alienation as Mark did. There's no problem too big for God. He can solve every single thing that has ever happened to you. And we just encourage you in the name of Jesus that all things are possible to him that believe. Yes. You can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens you. And he shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Trust that. Lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge him and he will direct your path in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Please give it up for Danny and Mark Bradley. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for being a part. Thanks for coming out. Now this next song from Myron Butler is called Bless the Lord. Psalms 103.